Welcome Buccaneers to Pixel Pirate Plays Resonance. This is your host Pixel Pirate and let's get into it. We just finished with the mainframe so let's go to the next. Dawn in Aventine City. The sun's beams glide between the buildings like a man's strong fingers through a dame's hair. The sight made me realize just how long I've been out here. Some low-level cat burglar caught breaking into the computer chip factory uptown had named this post office as a contact point for his buyer. Normally I'd say this wasn't the kind of lead that warranted an all-night stakeout, but the chief's dogged insistence that I drop this case pretty much guaranteed I was going to follow it through. Why did she want me off this case so bad? Could the chief have some connection to this criminal organization? I had a lot of questions, and my gut was telling me exactly two things. One, that I was hungry. And two, that it was Reggie's turn to go get some donuts. <laughs> uh, no. I got us those sandwiches a couple hours ago, remember? Yeah, but you didn't get the donuts. <laughs> so, how did you get the chief to sign off on this stakeout? Oh, right. About that. If anyone asks, we were patrolling the neighborhood around the arson all night. I'm not gonna get reprimanded for this, am I? Relax, Reg. Sir! What are you doing? That guy came from the alley. We don't have visibility down there. Which means, when he leaves, we're gonna lose him. I've got to get us a better line of sight. How are you gonna do that without them seeing you? I don't know. I'll grow some eyes in the back of my head. This is against regulations. You're out of the military now, Reg. This is police work. Sometimes you gotta pick which orders you're gonna follow. And other times, you gotta make your own orders. Detective Bennett. Going radio silent. Be careful. Alrighty. Let's go, Detective Bennett. So the first thing we need is some brick crumbling brick. You never know when a nice heavy chunk of brick is going to come in handy. Yoink. And then we go to this derelict car and steal the car mirror. Alright, so we use the piece of brick on the car mirror. I guess no one will notice one more little ding. Smash. I hope the owner of this thing has insurance. <laughs> Let's take the car mirror. And then we can use the brick on the mirror. This should help lighten the load. Now we have a shard of mirror. There we go, a nice serviceable, serviceable shard of mirror with a side of seven years bad luck. <laughs> Always the negative one, Detective Bennett. Boring, regular, empty wallet. Nowadays it just holds my badge and my credit card. Uh, ah, there we go. All right, let's buy a newspaper over at this newspaper stand. Online news site, the Abbott Post claims to have evidence of Vice President Brickman's struggle with mental illness. That's three dollars twenty-five to read more. Rumors and gossip. Reprinting a blog. Newspapers are trying harder and harder to stay relevant. All right, let's use the credit card on the newspaper vendor. Three twenty-five. Such a rip-off. Alright, so we've got our newspaper and our piece of mirror. So let's sit down here and use the shard of mirror with the newspaper. Look at me, I'm like MacGyver out here. <laughs> I hope Reggie's paying attention. And we'll use the newspaper. Now we play the waiting game. Now we just wait for the fish. And here he comes. Perfect timing. How's this for nonchalant? Got 
gotcha. What was that? Getting the job done. By breaking orders? How many times do I have to explain to you? This isn't the military, Reggie. It's police work. Sometimes you have to make hard. What the hell was that? It looks like a blackout. And it's back. All's well that ends well. I guess. Anyway, I hope you were paying attention from up there. To you, breaking regulations? To me, adjusting the operation's parameters based on changes in the field. Permission to speak freely, Detective Bennett? Not the military. What I saw was unnecessary, irresponsible, and hasty. We could have redeployed tomorrow with a better vantage on the alley. Reggie, these guys could have moved on by tomorrow. Sometimes you have to call an audible. Besides, I got what we needed. All's well that ends well. That kind of ends justify the means philosophy never cut it in the military. Welcome to the police force, Detective. Bennett, do you copy? This is Bennett. You notice that citywide blackout we just had? Looks like it's all lit up again now. Yeah, and so are the phones. We've got little mini emergencies all over Aventine, calling in all available officers to help out. What can we do? There's a subway car stuck near Humphrey Street Station, and we're getting reports of a fire over at Juno. So send the FD. They're deployed all over the city right now. We're trying to direct them where it's needed most. Could one of you check out Juno and the other help out on Humphrey Street? Radio back if additional emergency services are required. A sure thing. Thanks. Reg, you get the subway. I'll check out the fire at the lab. Yes, sir. Alrighty. Dad, look! Isn't that Juno Labs? Oh dear. So all that was the intro. <laughs> Talk to this fella. Um, excuse me? What? Who's there? What do you want? Could you tell me what happens to the building? Oh, I sure could, little man. It was a Sunday morning, just like any other. Or at least that's what I thought it'd be. I figured the most excitement I'd have today would be going home and watching Yentl again. That Barbara, she knows how to warm an old... Oops. Uh, let's just interrupt him, because he goes on and on. <laughs> okay, so you came to work, and... Oh, yeah, so I come into work as usual. Uh, I'm in the chem lab, mopping up the floors, dancing the cha-cha-cha. I'm nowhere near as agile as I used to be when I was younger, you see, but I get by. Interrupt again. Right, so <laughs> what happened while you mopped the floors? That's when I start to feel this little tingly feeling in my head. Then all the lights go out and there's this stinging heat and this vibration. Not like an earthquake or nothing, more like when those young hoodlums drive by my place at 3 a.m. blasting their hippity hoppity music. Did anything happen afterwards? So, the lights come back on, but a bunch of power cables get loose. And I'm thinking to myself, well that's just great, Saul, you're gonna die in this godforsaken lab. But obviously you didn't die, so how did you get out? The window! Right there, beckoning suggestively, showing me the path to safety. Only since it doesn't open, I have to break it open. So I take off my trusty wrench and smash it, then climb right on out. Only it's a bit of a fall, so now my ankle's all messed up. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. 
I told you, I can't go anywhere because of my ankle, remember? Alright, let's go have a look down here. I'm not really the muscle bound type. I'd better ask for help. Let's have a look at the window. No, I definitely can't reach it by myself. I'll need to ask someone to boost me up. Um, and the laboratory entrance. There's no way in with that huge slab of rock in the way. I don't think I'm going to. I don't think I'm getting in until I find a way to move it. So, um, all right. Just have a look at my notes again. Okay, so I've got to put the broken window in my short-term memory and go to talk to this boring old guy again. Um, excuse me? Back again, boy? I think that broken window is the only way in. I need to get into the building now and I can't climb up by myself. Well, I can't even get up. I just need a boost. Can't you just try? Sorry, son, but I think my ankle's broken. I'm not going anywhere. Maybe I can help you with that. Detective Bennett, ACPD. Something the matter here, gentlemen? I need to get into the lab immediately. Dr. Morales is probably still in there, and... Hey, don't look at old Saul. I told you I broke my ankle getting out of the building, didn't I? This Dr. Morales, is he a co-worker of yours? My boss. Look, he's in the building. He's hurt. And you know this for sure. You've seen him. Well, no, but he... Well, I'm going to need to go inside and assess the situation. Can't you just call for an ambulance or something? Not unless we know for sure that we need one. The whole city's overrun with emergencies right now on account of the blackout. So, as you can imagine, resources are spread pretty thin. Hey, now, what about my ankle? I'll drive <laughs> you to the hospital after I check things out inside. All right, Mr... Eddings. Call me Ed. Okay, Mr. Eddings. Ed. Let's take a quick look inside, and once I can confirm that an ambulance is needed, I'll call for one. Okay, so we ask... Sorry, him... detective? Yeah. Ask him to follow us. Come with me, please. All right. Go down to the window. Um, so I think we do that, and then talk Excuse to me, him again. Uh, Detective Bennett. What do you want? Um, any ideas, Detective? What do you think? Seems like we've got two options: the door or the window. Let's pick one. All right, and then we take no. <laughs> uh, what was it again? Okay, so we. Mister uh, Detective, sir. What do you want? Do Detective that, Bennett, could you try giving that boulder a push? I'm on it. All right, and then we do the same thing. And there it is. Whoa. Let's have a look. No, I can't get in yet. I've got to deal with that rogue power cable. Okay, um, so let's go through the window. Oh, I've already got that. Oops. Okay, sorry. sorry. Detective? Talk to the what do you detective. Want? And get him to give us a boost. Detective, would you try to boost me up to that window? I might be able to get to Dr. Morales. Alright, but if you see any sign of danger, you come straight back. I will. Careful of the glass. Alrighty. <laughs> yeah. 
And with that terrible disaster, we will end. Thanks everybody for watching. And we will see you next episode.